On today's Locked On Thunder podcast, SGA proves that last year was no fluke in his battle with Luka Doncic. Plus, we're going to grade the hot takes that you have ahead of the Oklahoma City Thunder season. All that and more coming up on today's Locked On Thunder podcast. You are Locked On Thunder, your daily Oklahoma City Thunder podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Let's get it going on the Locked On Thunder podcast, on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I am your host, media member, and editor-in-chief over at thunderousintentions.com. Rylan Styles. follow me on Twitter, at Rylan underscore Styles. Follow the show on Twitter, at LOThunderPod. Email the show, LOThunderPod at gmail.com. On today's show, we're diving into SGA proving last year was no fluke for this rising NBA star. Also, we're going to grade your hot takes. Everything from Isaiah Joe potentially cracking the starting five, Jay Will taking a massive leap, and more. Thank you so much for making us your first listen. We're here for you. Talking Thunder Basketball. Subscribe for free across all podcasting platforms here in a couple weeks. We're back to every single day. So make sure you get ready for that. Subscribe on YouTube. Subscribe wherever you get your podcast from. And you can also text the show. We'll have more on that later on. SGA dominates Luka Doncic in the FIBA World Cup quarterfinals. This was a fantastic game. And I think that with this game, you can continue to put to rest the worries about SGA's game. In a winner-go-home game, as the second favorites to win the World Cup only behind Team USA, with the better team, he matches up with superstar Luka Doncic, plays in 36 minutes, turns in 31 points, back-to-back 30-point outings, both in must-win games. Remember, Team Canada had to win Sunday after being upset on Friday to even get to this point in the tournament. 10 rebounds, 4 assists, only 1 turnover, 2 steals, shot 66% from the floor, 67% from inside the arc, and 1 for 4 from the 3-point from the line. At the free throw line, Shea went 14 for 16. Everything he's doing at the FIBA World Cup, he did last year in the NBA. It shows that it's sustainable. Even Thunder fans have questioned if the efficiency that we saw Shea play with last year is sustainable uh, you know, for the rest of, of Shea's career. Obviously, it's a big window, but like game, you know, game to game in season to season for SGA. And to this point, it looks sustainable. To this point, it looks legit because Shea's done this at every level, and he's done this no matter the stakes upon the game. And that's why I think that this game was so critical. Not only is he facing Luka Doncic, so you know that there was more eyeballs on it, and you saw on Twitter this morning that there was more buzz to it than uh, just any old normal game. But I think it's important for Shea to do this in different situations. What was the knock on Shea's game last year? There was nothing you could really kind of ding him for on the resume other than there was this constant reservation of, well, teams are overlooking the Thunder. So when teams start to actually try against the Thunder, this isn't going to work out. This isn't going to be uh, you know, the same Shea we see once teams start taking the Thunder more seriously. Once teams start game planning for the Thunder. Once teams kind of wake up, they're taking the Thunder too lightly. Let's see how he does this year as as guys actually try against the Thunder. Sort of belittling kind of what he accomplished last season. But in these games, everyone is trying. In these games, he doesn't have a team that's sneaking up on people. Not only are, are players playing for immense pride that you know representing their country, but Team Canada is the second favorites to win this whole thing. They're going to get everybody's best shot. You want to pull off that massive upset, and you want to uh, continue to advance for your country. And so even though, you know, I will admit in this game, obviously, Shea had the the much better team, it can't go both ways. You can't say he's only dominating in the NBA because, well, no one was prepared to play the Thunder, and they just kind of 
roll the ball out there and didn't care. And then whenever he has the advantage and he has the better team and he has, um, you know, a, a roster that you are gunning for, then say, well, this still doesn't matter because, well, he, of course he won. He had the better team. So I, I think that Shea continues to just sustain this epic run of efficiency, this epic run of scoring, and, and this epic run of, in, of impacting winning basketball, which helped lead the Thunder to a surprising 41 season to a play-in berth last year without Chet Holmgren, without all their pieces. And now you're seeing why the Thunder are so primed for a massive run in this season, and another win jump, which would be uh, pretty incredible. It's, it's, it's incredibly hard to make these uh, leaps in win total year to year. Uh, last year was an anomaly in the grand scheme of things, but you still think that with the, what the Thunder have added, they have another win jump in them, and that's in large part thanks to SGA and his superstar status. And so while he had the better team, it was very important that he that he outdueled Luka Doncic in this game. Uh, Luka did get ejected. He was complaining with the refs. He was frustrated all night. This was a huge third quarter from SGA and Team Canada, and they, they've used that third quarter this entire tournament, Shea and Team Canada have, just like the Thunder did. And Luka uh, finishes out with 26 points, five assists, four rebounds, and two steals. And despite having the better team, it still matters for SGA to have the better outcome in this one. And once again, you can look around as an Oklahoma City Thunder fan and you can say, one of the best players in the world, one of the best players in the entire world plays for the Oklahoma City Thunder. Again. And you just have to take time to appreciate that. You just don't get these type of players every year in every era in every season. And the Thunder in 15 years in Oklahoma City now going on 16, they've had, what, one season w without this type of player in the sense of like already playing at this level. They had Shea throughout the entire rebuild, of course, but you know, playing at an all NBA level uh, really g jumped up into, into last year. But you, you go from Kevin Durant to Russell Westbrook, and you have Paul George, you have Carmelo Anthony. Like you have these guys, Chris Paul, you have these future Hall of Famers, James Harden, playing in Oklahoma City. This is an, an immaculate run that the Thunder are on, and it's never guaranteed, and it's never promised. And you can look around the NBA, and as we as we close up the World Cup uh, on Sunday, and we enter in this kind of two to three week dead period before media day, before training camp, before preseason. As we do that on Sunday. Take some time to reflect and go look around and research other NBA teams. A lot of other NBA teams who have been around a lot longer than 16 years would absolutely swap their entire franchise's history for this Thunder run, where more often than not, in 97% of your seasons in Oklahoma City, you've had one of the best players in the entire world on your team. That's just jaw-dropping to, to consider. And so I, I think that it cannot be discounted uh, that the Thunder once again have one of those guys that, that you can depend on to be uh, a top player in this league. And so Shea now gets his team to advance to a Final Four matchup against Serbia, which would have been fantastic. You know, it's going to be a great game anyway, but could have been an even better game had Serbia been fully healthy. Uh, obviously, they're not healthy right now, um, but still going to be a tough team to play for Team Canada at 3.45 a.m. Central Time on ESPN+. Plus. So make sure you tune into that. If they win, they'll advance to play Sunday in the championship game against the winner of Germany and USA. If they lose, they'll still play Sunday, but it'll be in the, the third place game against, of course, the loser of Germany versus Team USA. What a run it's been on for Team Canada. They had the one blemish so far, uh, but otherwise a perfect run for SGA and company including back-to-back -back statement games. like the, the, the Thunder saw SGA pull off a 12-point comeback in a must-win game on Sunday, and in this game, he outduels Luka Doncic, one of the best players in the world. So like that's been a great week for the Thunder and SGA. Hopefully it continues on Friday and you get into uh, the championship game if you're Team Canada. And if you can get into the dance, and if the stars align to where the two you know, top Vegas odds winners uh, in, in a... In a SGA and Team Canada and Team USA play each other on Sunday. That's going to be a great a great day of sports, but also a great day of hoops because Team Canada versus USA is something that I think everyone wants to see 
take place on Sunday. And it would lead you right into, that'll be on Sunday morning, it'll lead you right into a full slate of NFL football, which you can bet on with our good friends over at FanDuel. Go there right now to FanDuel.com slash locked on today to get started folks vandal is great and they're offering you a special special offer with that aforementioned nfl season kicking off they have incredible deals with vandal the america's number one sports book right now customers can get five dollars if you bet five dollars you get two hundred dollars in bonus bets back guaranteed win or lose no questions asked so you bet five you get 200 back in bonus bets guaranteed win or lose Plus, all customers, every single customer, if you will bet five dollars, you know, th- right now for the kickoff of the NFL season, you will get a hundred dollars off NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. So there you go. You can watch every single out of market game with a hundred dollars off of it just by making a five dollar bet at FanDuel. That's a great deal. You're gonna want NFL Sunday ticket. Uh, I have Sunday ticket. It's great. Go bet on FanDuel. It's great too. Make sure you check it out today. Fender.com slash locked on. Fender.com slash locked on. It is great with uh, the spreads and player props and over unders and everything else. The app is easy to use, safe, fast withdrawals, all that good stuff at Fender.com slash locked on. Fender.com slash locked on. Kick off the NFL season with an offer you will not want to miss, which is what we just described to you. FanDuel, the official partner of Locked On and the NFL. All right, we're back on the Lockdown Thunder Podcast, on the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you so much for making us your first listen every single morning, every single day. We're here for you talking Thunder basketball. Subscribe for free across all podcasting platforms so you never miss an episode. And you can also text the show at 405-963-3686. You're going to get alerted with every new show that comes out. You're going to get moved to the front of the line on mailbags, on hot take submissions, and just talk basketball. You're going to know what we're hearing about the Thunder. You're going to know our instant reaction to to things as the season unfolds. And, of course, you're going to have a private uh, session where you can just ask questions and get details and information on the Thunder. So it's going to be great. And we're going to continue to find more ways to utilize uh, the text line. So make sure you check us out at subtext 405-963-3686. Speaking of, that's where our first hot take of the evening comes from. And if you're unaware of what this is, uh, Put out on Twitter and, of course, the subtext line for your hot take submissions, what your hottest take is about the NBA, about the Thunder, about whatever in life. And I'm going to grade them on a scale of one pepper to five peppers. Five, of course, being the hottest, most outlandish take. One being like, okay, yeah, I could see that for sure happening. So we're going to do that right now. The the call this week on Twitter had a million trillion responses. Not that much, obviously, but it still was a ton of responses. We're going to use this show and tomorrow's show to uh, grade your takes and your hot takes because we just need to break it up because it's so many hot takes. I so much appreciate uh, your support and your listenership and also the interaction on topics like this to help move the show along. First submission from the text line, Misha and Wallace will be great for the Thunder, but Isaiah Joe will be the star of the bench, improving at scoring at all three levels, continuing to hustle on defense. And so the, the take is, he will finish top five and sixth in the end of the year. He will get top three in the three-point contest in, in, in Indy, and he'll have multiple posters. Look, I'm going to give this take a 2.5 out of five. It, it's not that crazy of a take. I, will he continue to be a bench star? I absolutely think so. I, I, I think that if you believe in his three-point shot uh, s- sustaining, as we do here at Locked on Thunder, if you uh, believe – in the fact that he's a better defender than people give him credit for, which we believe here at Locked on Thunder, you can see his mid-range chops. You can see his rim scoring. Uh, I think that he absolutely will be a star for this Thunder team off the bench. His floor spacing is incredibly valuable for the Thunder. Now, finishing top five and sixth man of the year, let's break it down piece by piece. So the star piece of the bench, great. Top five and sixth man of the year voting. I wouldn't think that that's as necessarily hard as it appears on the surface. You're not saying he's going to win the award. Just finish top five. And this comes down to your personal preference about the Thunder. Do you think the Thunder will win 44 plus games? 44, 45, even up to 50 plus games. Like If you think the Thunder can get that jump in wins of four plus then that'll be largely due to, of course, their young core. 
but secondarily due to Isaiah Joe off the bench being a bench star. So that's why I still lean at 2.5 because I, I think that this is absolutely possible with uh, a jump in wins. Now, the three-point contest part is honestly probably the, the hottest take of all this just because will the NBA put him in? The NBA likes to side with stars. Uh, and if there are injury replacements, as we saw last year in the three-point contest in Utah, it typically just goes to people who are already there, which is how you saw uh, Julius Randle get in last year. Isaiah Joe told me he wants to play in the three-point contest and wants to participate. He led the NBA at that point in the season of three-point shooting last year and still didn't get in. So will the NBA invite him? If the NBA invites him, he'll be top three. If the NBA invites him to the three-point contest, as someone who just gets to the arena super early to watch him shoot threes uh, before anyone's in the gym, it is it is fantastic seeing him him put on a clinic before games. He'll win the three point contest uh, and at least finish top three for sure. Uh, so that's just a matter of will the NBA actually put him in, which they should. He wants to do it. He's eager to do it, and he's of course a really good three point shooter. And multiple posters. The reason why that's not the hottest take. He had quite a few last year, uh, and multiple in my mind just means two. So like two two posters. For a sustained role, like that, he should get a jump on sooner this year than last year. I'll say he catches two posters in this season for sure. Uh, so thank you for reaching out on the text line. That's again, 405 963 3686. Moving on now to Twitter at Rob Andrew PH. Isaiah Joe will be inserted into the starting lineup by the midway point of this season. Whew, this is a 4.9 on a scale of one to five because one, it's not a five because Mark loves to tinker. And so I could see Mark just doing something like this, but it is a 4.9 because Mark and the Thunder also love Lou Dort. I don't see a world as of this moment where if healthy, the starting lineup is not SGA, Josh Giddy, J Dub, Dort, and Chet. To me, that's your starters as long as they're healthy in this moment. I don't see a world that they that they deviate from that. Now, we have another question about the, about the closing lineup. We'll talk about that coming up. But uh, for now, this take is a 4.9 out of 5. At Weird Berto, I expect J. Will, again, this is Arkansas Jalen Williams, J. Will, to take a JJJ type leap. And I think Chet will lead the NBA in blocks. Let's start with Chet real quick. So Chet leading the NBA in blocks. Last year, the league leader was three per game, and it was, coincidentally, JJJ. Next closest was 2.5 in Nick Claxton. So you're going to need to get around the ballpark of three. And then you can also, like, was Memphis cooking the books a bit for JJJ? Remember that saga last year, which is why I love the NBA. There are so many of these, like, hilarious drama filled events that happen. And in the very moment of the season, that felt like such a massive deal. And now it's just kind of a blip in the radar. Like there was a conspiracy theory on Reddit, which like apparently had some validity to it that in home games, the Memphis scorebook keeper was, was give, giving JJJ too many blocks at home and the rabbit hole that that caused us to go down. Uh, but around the ballpark of three, uh, I will give this a 3.5. It's obviously going to be tough uh, to get up to three or, 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 you know, above three if JJJ keeps doing uh, his shot blocking output. And we know that he sells out for blocks. And at times it gets him in foul trouble, does JJJ for Memphis. Uh, but uh, it's not an unheard of take because I think that, that Chet will average more than two per game. So 3.5. And you just got to wonder, is Memphis still cooking the books for JJJ? Now, as far as will J will from Arkansas have a JJJ type leap. This is a, this is a 4.9999999 repeating take. And I only don't give it a five because I do in fact like uh J will, but having a JJJ type leap from J will would mean that this thunder team is the best constructed young core of all time above a shadow of a doubt. Like, think about that. If you have Shea, if you have Josh Giddy, if you have J-Dub and you have Chet playing at their level that they played last year and above, you know, in progressing, and of course for Chet, just playing at the level we thought he'd play at uh, coming out of college, and then J-Will becomes Jaron Jackson Jr.? Okay, yeah, you have the best team of all time 
on your hands in terms of a cost control perspective, uh, a young core perspective, and potential perspective. Because if he has JJJ potential in him, like the the, the possibilities are endless for this team. So I, I it's it's not going to happen. He's not going to have a JJJ type leap. But I do think that Jay will will be a really good rotational piece for the Thunder. I I think that he was good last year, and reducing his role to that secondary bench unit allows him to face off with secondary bigs, which helps his case as, a, as kind of an undersized big man, uh, but also reducing his role makes his impact grow larger uh, because he can sustain it and he can um, you know, just be better overall off the bench. So I think that Jay will, will take a leap this year and will be, will look better and will still be very good. It's just, he's not going to play like Jaron Jackson jr. Uh, he's not going to be an all-star level player uh, as much as I do like Jay will at never been equal. Mitch will be in the closing lineup for the thunder. So this gets two grades because I want to be fair and I want to to um, grade it as though you intend it. So let's give it the first grade. If you mean that Micic will be in the closing lineup at times for the Thunder, like there are going to be matchups where it's going to close with Micic. If that's what you mean by this take, I'm going to say it's a it's a one. Yes, I think there will be games where. Micic is closing games for the Thunder, where he is, um, in certain matchups, the best option that the Thunder have uh, as, as part of the best five-man option the Thunder have that night. I, I fully believe that, and I think that this is a great take. If you think that uh, no matter what the scenario is, no matter what the matchup is, independent of all that, he is closing out games, then this increases to you know a, a, a four. Because I think that, again, the the love for Lou Dort, the love for those guys that are in the starting five matter, plus, uh, you know, Isaiah Joe might close out games because of his great shooting, and Casey Wallace, uh, because you can get shooting and some defensive tenacity. Like, you have so many options on your Rolodex to spin through that uh, I don't think that there's going to be a, a firm closing lineup. I think that that's going to be a revolving door dependent upon what you need that night, depending upon the scenario. Do you need to finish out the last minute on defense and just like focus on defense and, and and limit the other team from scoring as they mount the comeback? Do you need to focus on, hey, we got to score in a hurry. We've got to score quickly and you've got to score threes. Okay, well, then that changes who your lineup is in that scenario too and the Thunder are going to be adaptive to that. So uh, if it's just if you just mean like Mitchell at times will close games, I agree with you for sure. Uh, if you mean like no matter what happens, he's going to close games no matter what, it gets hotter. But the argument to be made for this would be, hey, he's a two-time EuroLeague MVP. Uh, you know, he, he's going to bring that steadiness to a roster that's that's inexperienced in in uh, certain times, you know, uh, of close games and closing out games. So he can bring some of that um, stability. Then I, I can still see where you're coming from, but I still say it's hotter because I don't know that the Thunder will have a permanent starting, uh, you know, a permanent closing lineup for the Thunder this year. I think that'll be constantly changing. Coming up. Are the Thunder overrated? Will the Thunder win 55 games and more? Coming up on today's show. We're back on the Lockdown Thunder Podcast, on the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you so much for making us your first listen every single morning, every single day. We're here for you talking Thunder basketball, grading your hot takes right now on Lockdown Thunder this one from at Danny DeChuro. 55 wins for the Thunder with Lou Dort being traded in a three-team trade to land the Thunder Damian Lillard. This is a 10.5 out of 5. This is a, it broke the pepper scale. In fact, we're now in a pepper shortage. Uh, there's no more peppers to give out today. A 10.5 out of, out of 5. Look, the Thunder do love Lou Dort, and they do want to be patient. But even if they did want to go all in at some point this season, Damian Lillard is not the right piece whatsoever to do that on. An aging guard on this team, the way that this team is constructed, is not the right piece. It does not fit the play style. It does not fit what the Thunder want to do. And so that's why this is an outlandish take, and I get it. You see some national guys who don't really have a pulse on what the Thunder are doing, uh, you know, kind of shoehorning in. Well, what if the Thunder just start out really good and just say, hey, you know what? We want to throw our hats in the ring for them. It doesn't work. It, it just doesn't fit. Uh, it's a great name, 
It's a great discussion point in September. Uh, the Thunder do have the assets, but the patience part of it is just as much to do with the market as it is to do with team success. So yes, the Thunder might burst onto the scene this year and have a massive, massive winning streak and record and, and, and look to be ready to go. But you have to remain patient for the right fit or else you end up like Minnesota. And the Thunder don't want to be Minnesota. And if we know one thing about the NBA, it's that the next disgruntled star is right under our nose. The next disgruntled star is around the corner. Like sand through the hourglass, these are the NBA days of our lives. There's going to be someone else that fits better, that might cost more. You don't want to blow your assets on somebody uh, too soon. And so even independent of, of being patient for the sake of this core, being patient for the sense of getting a better player who fits better, who works alongside with what you want to do. Dame is a phenomenal player. Dame is a Hall of Famer. Dame is still going to impact winning basketball this year, uh, no matter where he plays. But if you're Oklahoma City, who would you think fits better with the way that this team is constructed? Dame? Or the possibility of Giannis asking out? Or even the possibility of Joel Embiid asking out? Or even the possibility of insert whatever star asking out? Because guess what, folks? There's a possibility anyone on the face of the NBA world asks out in this day and age. The Giannis stuff this summer came out of relative nowhere. And I'd rather trade for Giannis with what the Thunder do. So that's why it's such a hot take, because first and foremost, the Thunder want to be patient, first and foremost, just out of the get-go. But even if they deviated from being patient, I'm not sure that Dame is the right one to go for, even though he's still a great player. From at Thunder up underscore two, the Thunder are title contenders if healthy. This is a 4.5 out of five. Title contenders is an is a incredible hot take. At my best case scenario, if I put on my most optimistic Thunder glasses I have, this team can be a top three seed in the second round exit. Like if, if that is the most optimistic outlook out there for the Thunder team for me, not title contenders. Because me personally, I believe in needing to go through the war, needing to go through the battle, needing to get over the hump. And this is a coach. This is a team. This is a core. This is an organization with this group that have not been through the battles yet. We have not seen this Thunder team play a playoff series. And if you want to believe what this Thunder team says every single game, every time they're asked about playing an opponent, that they don't game plan for opponents. They're worried about themselves. They're only controlling what they can control. They're only looking inward. If you want to believe that, then this is a core that has not scouted other teams and, and, and made adjustments game to game and uh, you know singularly focused on an opponent before, which is a big part of the playoffs. Now, I think that Mark can do it. I think Mark's a great coach. I think that Mark is going to be one of the best coaches in the NBA, and you don't get that kind of credit from the national media until you do it in the playoffs, uh, even though he did finish runner-up for Coach of the Year last year. Uh, but I think in the playoffs series, just based upon the baseball-style series we've seen him play, which is not apples to apples, but the baseball-style series, even dating back to his first Thunder team, which you all know about that Thunder team, even dating back then, the, the, the adjustments he made game to game in those settings were fantastic. So I don't worry about the ability to do it. It's just that it's very hard to execute it your first go around, your first ever attempt at it. And that goes for players and coaches. So I think that this core is a championship contending core. They're going to get there, coach, players included. I think they have the best, one of the best, one of the best coaches in the NBA when it's all said and done. When we look back on Mark's career, I think he'll be one of the best coaches. I think you have a really good core that can win a championship together. But this specific season is too soon. And that's okay. That's okay. That, that would still put them right on time. At Obey underscore the dope, Thunder finish 12 offensively and fourth defensively. We got a 2.1 take here. I love this take. Uh, I love this take because uh, it's a good number for the offense to finish. And then for me, I believe the Thunder are a top 10 defense. And you can easily sell me on top five. And so it'll be a hard feat. Obviously, you don't just want to act like you can just roll out of bed and be a top five defense. But 
with Mark and this Thunder team and the schematics that they use defensively, I think they're going to be a top five team. So as far as hot takes go, this is a very, very, very well thought out and rational one. At Williams underscore prime, the Thunder are overrated for now, at least. They will have a Cavs-like series next year. So I give this a two. Uh, it it kind of depends on like overrated. Me personally, I haven't seen him them be overrated. I've seen a ton of excitement. I guess you can argue that <laughs> that Thunder up underscore two did overrate them a little bit. But what I'm saying is, let's look at the Cavs-like season. The Cavs won 51 games last year, and then they lost in the first round 4-1 to to the Knicks. I think that that's kind of what people want to have happen. And like, that's the rating that people kind of have for the Thunder. Like most Thunder fans say, oh yeah, we're going to win 50 games. And then, you know, finish in the, you know, get, get bounced in the first round or maybe win a first round series. I think that that's exactly what, what this prediction is, is what most people think are going to happen with the Thunder. So yeah, I think that it, I would absolutely take a Cavs like season and, and think that that would be a, a fine rating for them. And I, and, I just, me personally, haven't seen them be overrated past that. I've seen the 50 win predictions, I, which would be a 10, which would be a 10 win improvement, which would be just, just great again, coming off of the improvement you saw last year. Uh, but I haven't really seen much more than that. So that's kind of where I'm at with things for the Thunder. And then you have at Gypsy Hustle, three players on the all rookie team. This is our last one for the day. Again, if you're, if you're all rookie, uh, I'm sorry, if, if your hot take was not brought up today, we're going to do this again tomorrow to get through all of them. A lot of hot takes were put in. We're going to get them all uh, on tomorrow's show. But at Gypsy Hustle, three players on the all-rookie team. So here's who's eligible for the Thunder. Let's break it down. Chet, Kaysen, Keontae Johnson, and Michic. No offense to Keontae Johnson. I like Keontae Johnson's game. He's not going to play enough to, to, to qualify or warrant even consideration uh, for the all-rookie team, in my opinion. So let's take him out of it. So now you're down to Chet, Kaysen, and Micic. You got to ask yourself, will Kaysen have a large enough role early on? And then you have to ask yourself, can Micic sway voters away from the, the youngsters of this class, which is a really good NBA draft class, by the way. So I think that I think that Chet Holmgren's a lock. I think Chet Holmgren is a lock. And it goes back to, for Micic, what we said about the Isaiah Joe six-man of the year. Do you believe in the wind jump for the Thunder? If you believe in the wind jump for the Thunder, I think that Mitchell is a yes for second team all NBA because the smart guys are not going to be able to resist him. People who want to be the smart guys of the NBA media are going to say, well, you know, this 29 year old rookie is really the difference for the Thunder this year. And, and he should be on all rookie team. And so it's going to be enough of that buzz to get Mitchell on the, on the all rookie team uh, roster. Plus he's going to be productive. So that's going to help a lot too. Uh, so then it comes down to uh, to, to Case and Wallace. That would be three out of ten spots in for the entire NBA. This is not a terrible take. Uh, it's not even a an outlandish one, but it's incredibly hard to pull off. And for that, I'm going to say three point eight, just because of how difficult of a feat this would be for the Thunder. But good odd take. Let's see if it comes true. Uh, hopefully it does. That means that the Thunder will be a really, really, really good team if they have three all rookie team members. But again, thank you for your hot takes. I really appreciate the feedback and the support on this show and also the interaction on this topic. We'll have the, you know, the, we'll have the rest of your hot takes on tomorrow's show. We're also going to recap Shea's semifinal game and Dort's semifinal game against uh, Serbia on Friday. And hopefully... They'll be in the championship game on Sunday, but either way, we'll recap Sunday's game, either the championship or third place game on Sunday. So until then, be good and be good to one another.